So kind of related to that, um, for many men and even for many churches, there can be an assumption that seven pillars of freedom groups are, are kind of separate from other discipleship approaches. But why is this not the case? How are these groups uh, a vital part of spiritual growth for men? I'll get there, but I, I'm going to get there roundabout probably. Okay. <laughs> uh, when I first was early in my recovery, I read the book, The Cure. And I don't remember a lot about the book, but I do remember one super impactful thing, at least to me. And, and what he said was, uh, as disciples, we are meant to love others as Jesus loves us. However, when we have hidden sin mm -hmm. in our lives, we can't receive that love because the people that are loving us, whether we acknowledge this consciously or subconsciously, are uninformed of who we really are. Mm -hmm. And so we know that we, and we believe, we aren't lovable. If they knew who we were, they wouldn't love us. Yeah. So that love can't actually go through us. Mm -hmm. It blocks mm -hmm. yeah. there and we can't receive it. So with that in mind, if you think about trying to disciple someone that can't receive love because they have unresolved trauma or addiction totally. in their life, it's not going to be effective. Mm -hmm. So the way I look at this is uh, seven pillars is that process of going through and cleaning out that sin, confession, and then that love of Jesus can actually flow through you and you can actually receive discipleship. The extreme I always ask is, if I was to tell you seven out of ten men in your church were addicted to meth, how effective would your discipleship program be? Well, you'd go, the first thing i got to do is get them off meth. Yeah, yeah, So that exactly. they can become disciples. Right, right, because that's such a hindrance for sure. And even understanding, too, like the motive, because the more you understand about sexual brokenness, you understand it's not actually about sex. That has far more to do with um, the wounds and the trauma that we've experienced in our past, also mm -hmm. our family of origin, all mm -hmm. of that. And so I think in that way, you're taking uh, much more of a, not just saying like the past is the past, but looking at how a person got to where they are. And discipleship has to incorporate that. Mm -hmm. Like I have to know where I've been in order to know how to get to where I want to get right. to. Like, I think that's a really important piece. But then I mentioned this on the previous episode too, and I feel like it's going to come up in every single one of these episodes in this series, is that our discipleship has to be holistic. It mm -hmm. cannot be, we're only going to like give you basically all this brain knowledge about what the Bible says about theology, about what it means to be a disciple, but not talk to you about how to treat your body yeah. or not, uh, you know, how to take care of yourself mentally. Yeah. And sexuality is something we're born with. It yeah. is part, it's literally built into us from the day we were born. Uh, we're, as God is forming us in our mother's womb, sexuality is a part of that formation. Mm -hmm. And so if we want our discipleship to actually be something that people are growing and becoming better versions of themselves, becoming more like Jesus, mm -hmm. becoming better husbands and wives. Our discipleship has to incorporate sexuality because yeah. it is a part of the holistic being we are. Yeah, it, it seems like a big part of spiritual growth is removing the barriers that keep us from growing. 100%. Right? I mean, if, if you've got a garden and you've got really terrible soil, it doesn't matter how much time and work you put into the seeds and water and for like, mm. the soil is going to keep the growth from happening. Yep. Or if, if we were doing, you know, to your point, Mike, if, if there's some secret un, undiagnosed battle with pornography or sexual sin, other things are just going to bounce off. It'd be like if you were doing a financial, you know, stewardship class and someone never revealed that they have a hidden secret credit card and a $20,000 bill that's hanging over their head. It doesn't matter all the other budgeting techniques and, mm -hmm. you know, tracking software. Like it's not going to help unless you know that we've got to deal with this unaddressed right. part of your life. And I, I think the same is true in our sexuality that it, it may not seem like on the same level as Bible study and prayer and some of the typical spiritual disciplines, but, right. but I guarantee if someone has this issue unresolved in their life, it is a constant block for them. Mm -hmm. And so to free them of that hindrance is to free them for greater growth. Yes, yes. And I think when we see that, it, it just impacts every area of our discipleship. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know when uh, this term, I don't know if, I don't think I developed this, but I remember feeling when I was in my addiction, I was doing all the right things at church. I was volunteering. I was involved in parachurch ministries and yeah. youth ministry and those kinds of things. But I, I look back now and I was spiritually neutered, so to speak. Mm. I looked good yeah. and no one could tell that I had an issue, mm -hmm. but inside uh, I just was stunted. I couldn't grow. Yeah. And there was some frustration there. And in some respects, I think... When you try and disciple someone who has that blockage, it just increases their shame because on some level they go, right. if I was a real Christian, I would be growing. I yeah. would be feeling the presence of Jesus. I right. would be doing all these things, and yeah. I'm not, and I've got this hidden sin that I can't, I can't get past. You know, In my mind, the lie I always believed was if you were a real man, mm. you could overcome this on your own, right? right? Um, 
And so here I was hidden in this uh, kind of stunted spiritual growth stage, mm -hmm. looked all the part. I attended church every week. I was there on Wednesdays, right. very involved, yeah. but I wasn't living the life that God had called me to live. Yeah. And I couldn't. Right. Yeah. A, a couple of different things are coming to mind, but I just feel like if your body, if you have cancer in your body and you're expecting to function properly, uh, like that's just silly to think about, mm -hmm. but sexual addiction, sexual brokenness can be so cancerous in your soul, in your yeah. body that you're not able to function properly. And so assuming that I can just tell someone who has cancer, like, well, just get up, go for a run every day. It'll be good for you. It's like, well, I can't, I physically am not right. capable of actually oh, doing that. Good. And so I feel like that's a, mm -hmm. maybe just another illustration to use. Cause I, I, I just, this is something that is so deeply seated and rooted to who we are as people, the way God created us. And is the one area we feel most shame about, in my opinion, but I, I, I think that it's the most shameful area or topic that we have in a church. Mm -hmm.